So when it comes to injector problems, there are two possibilities. One, the injectors are spraying too much fuel and two, the injectors are not spraying enough fuel or they are not spraying at all fuel. In that situation, the engine will crank but not start. So in this video, I'm going to show you what you can do in these situations, what you can test and how to remove and replace the injectors from this Mazda 2. I'm going to use the live data of short term fuel trim and long term fuel trim. So you can see how these values will change if the injectors will spray more or less fuel. The OBD2 port is under here. Okay, so this is the information we're going to use. Okay, so here we go, guys. We are entering in a closed loop. You can see we've got a negative short-term fuel trim, which means that the computer is spraying more fuel. There is no much fluctuation in here. However, I've got some gasoline in here. And if I add it on the intake, you're going to see this minus 3.9 going even more negative. So let's see. Here we go. You see it right there? Minus 20, minus 22. So as you could see, all I did is to add some gasoline in there. The engine is sucking those vapors and the short term fuel trim becomes more negative because the computer thinks the injectors are spraying more fuel. The oxygen sensor detected that and the fuel trim is adjusted. Right now, it might be possible that the check engine light is triggered. So let's see. No, not yet. This is a clear sign when the injectors are spraying too much fuel. Now let's see what happens if the injectors are clogged and they don't spray enough fuel. Okay, I've got here a vacuum line which I'm going to remove. You see, the engine actually stopped. <laughs> so I'm going to start the engine again and try to control the vacuum leak. Let's uh, watch again the fuel trims. Okay, it goes negative right now because probably there is still gasoline in there. And I'm going to release the vacuum. Okay, you can see that short term fuel trim going positive. Right? You see there, minus 7, 8. You can see it in there, minus 7.8 and 24.2 that was the positive one it looks like on this engine if there is more than 25 percent deviation from zero percent it will stop the engine okay so there is no check engine light and that means that the computer is still trying to figure out what happened and it will try to adjust the injectors so from these guys we learned that the computer uses the injectors as the main tool to keep the air fuel ratio of 14.7 to 1 and therefore the injectors are going to be under a lot of stress and they can fail so it's very important to know how to read the live data in order to determine if you have any problem with the injectors from first place so with that being said let's go ahead and remove the injectors from this car okay so for that we got to take out this cover let's start with this small one Now on the injector themselves, we can do three more tests. One of the tests, I'm not going to do it now because it's a long process, but I have a separate video about that. You can go ahead and check it out. I'm going to link it in the description. You're going to see how to actually measure how much fuel is coming out of the injectors. And that will help you to determine if one or more injectors are spraying a lot more fuel or less fuel than others. So for the other two tests, let's unplug the connectors. I'm going to use this peak again. Next, take a voltmeter and turn it to 200 ohms. And the specs for these injectors are 13.1 ohms. So let's see 
if we've got the correct values. Let's start with the first one. We've got 13.1, 13.1, 13.1. And 13.1. Now, of course, if you see, for example, 13.3 is not really a big deal, but keep in mind that little difference will mean less fuel injected, which will cause a lean condition. And over time, if this problem will progress, then you get to other complications. So it's very important to keep an eye on these injector specs. Now, let's check if we got the correct signal at the connector. So, for that, I have to connect the computer of the car. Okay, so now the computer is plugged in and I've got access to the injector connectors. And let's see, turn the voltmeter to 20 volts, make sure that these leads are connected correctly, not on the amperage, because you might short circuit the computer. Now the key is in the second position and we should be able to see less than 12 volts because that's how the computer will test the injectors. Okay, we've got 8.88. Let's see the second one exactly the same value third one okay again exactly the same value the last one almost exactly the same value so i know this engine runs fine and these are the correct values if you see some big deviation from these numbers then you've got a signal problem from the computer and that's going to be a lot more challenging to detect because you got to take out all these wires and see where is the problem especially if you don't see any voltage through one of these connectors. Now another problem related to the fuel delivery is going to be the fuel pressure and for the fuel pressure is the fuel pump responsible for that. So with the computer connected you can go ahead and check the fuel pressure. You just have to disconnect this line, find the right adapter and then you're going to see the fuel pressure. Actually let me see it now. Okay so I'm going to disconnect the fuel line and see if this is the right adapter Okay, have prepared some paper towel in here. So you're gonna need an adapter which will look exactly like this line here. Okay, so it looks like I don't have the right adapter, unfortunately. All right, so you're gonna need a 12 millimeter to release the fuel rail. Now in general, on an engine, there are so many points where you can find a vacuum leak, which will make your fuel system go lean. So, one of it is going to be by the injectors. There is a small gasket, which as you can see, you can easily remove by hand the fuel rail. And on most of other cars, that's not the case. It's going to be very difficult to take out the fuel rail together with the injectors. But on this car, it's extremely easy. You just pull it out. That will indicate a weakness. And this is the weakness right here. These gaskets, if these gaskets fail or crack or something like that, then you've got a massive air leak. Fortunately, it's very easy to detect. You just inspect these gaskets and they should be in good condition. All right, so here we've got the fuel rail. Now we've got these side clips, which needs to be removed, just like this. Now I already tried to empty this fuel rail of fuel, but there is still some fuel in there, so let's empty it again. If you work in a closed space, make sure that you've got proper ventilation. You don't want to inhale too much gasoline. It will give you headaches. Okay, so here they come. Inspect as well the gaskets. These are very important as well. Probably even more important than checking how much fuel is coming out through the injectors because most of the time they are going to be within spec since the gasoline this day has high quality and they don't damage the internal components. So if for example this small o-ring will fail then the gasoline will travel down, will go by this second large o-ring and it will go inside the intake manifold therefore creating a rich condition and you might think that the injector is leaking when in reality it's just a gasket especially if you get gasoline smell when you turn the air condition on then that might be an indicator of some sort of leak along the injector and if you plan working on your car it's a very good idea to purchase one of these kits it will give you all sorts of sizes of o-rings and believe me one day they will save you a lot of money and time so 
very important to have one of these now everything looks good let's insert the injectors back you just twist them and they should go in place there and together with the clip make sure that the clip secures very well the injector if you reuse the injectors make sure that you keep them in a clean environment without any debris now it's time to lubricate these rubber gaskets i'm using some silicone spray that will protect the rubber as well torque them to 15 foot pounds reconnect the line and plug back the connectors okay guys so that was pretty much it about the injectors on this car if you have this Mazda 2 go ahead and check out the playlist with more videos about it and if you like this video give it a big thumbs up also subscribe if you are new to this channel you're gonna get a lot of free videos about how to diagnose and repair maintain different car models and until next time drive safe so I can see you in the next video